Okay. According to rain.org, every 98 seconds, an American is sexually assaulted. 17,700,000 women have been victims of rape since 1998. 13% of female rape victims commit suicide. 69% of victims are 12 to 34 years old. These people are someone's sister, their mother, their best friend, and their family. In society today, we find that the majority of women are victims of sexual assault, harassment, and rape. And most of the time, it remains hidden. Some are victimized while others take their own lives. Some are applauded for opening up while others are shut down. The schools had a history of sexual assault with the Audrey Pot case. Mercury News reported Audrey Pot saying, my life is over. I have a reputation for a night I don't even remember, and the whole school knows. The boys continued attending Saratoga High despite the media attention. Since then, the district has attempted to spread awareness. Audrey Potts' story has resonated throughout the community, but many still agree that not enough has been done to make this a prominent issue on campus. Our names are Shania Joffrey and Sahana Serene. Coming into the project, the goal was to create a documentary about the prevalence of sexual assault at Saratoga High. But as we got further into it, we learned that not only is a a subject that is not talked about, but it is a subject that cannot be talked about. In Saratoga High School, students always go by a blueprint to reach goals and to reach their high expectations. However, this project helped us to understand, to accept spontaneity, and to work our way through things when they didn't work out. So we came into this uh, documentary during the Me Too movement, which helped inspire us um, to create a documentary about sexual assault in our Saratoga community because it was just most prevalent. And you know, since like, especially since we've had a history of sexual assault, um, and so like in the beginning we were pretty much on top of it. Um, we were following our blueprint, and um, and even if we like faced challenges such as like finding you know, access to cameras or finding ways to disguise our interviewees, we still managed to be like, you know, following our plan like in the beginning. The week that we start finishing up interviews, uh, we thought it would be a great idea to interview admin because we wanted their perspective. But it, it wasn't, but that actually ended up killing our motivation and our incentive to even complete the documentary. They had said, that if they found out that a student in the documentary was talking about his or her experience with sexual assault, they and law enforcement would have to get involved. And it's actually based on the Child Protection Act, where if an adult finds out that a child is in harm's way, then the adult is authorized to report it. And yes, that's true, but it's also ironic, because in this school, we are encouraged to talk about and educate one another about you know, injustices that are going on, but we're also barred from doing so. It was upsetting because now we, our entire platform of the documentary changed. We would have to, we ended, we would have to create a generalized documentary and like, I guess, wishy-wash the truth that lurks in Saratoga. And so other than that, I guess, so that, that ended up being, I guess, like, the big bummer is just mandated reporting. Um, we want to protect our sources. And so other than that, we also ended up having to exclude like this artistic element that both Sahana and I were looking forward to. There was this painting with like a, where a student would just like paint a brush stroke on, I can't, oh dear. Okay, uh, where, a, where a student would just paint a brushstroke on canvas describing like how they felt about sexual assault. And we ended up having to exclude that element because it just kind of drew away from the focus of the documentary. But we still have one hour of footage that we don't want to waste and we are not giving up on this documentary. So we hope to include, we hope to complete this over the summer and maybe just even take the risk of putting our sources in. And yeah, you'll see here. Wait, listen very carefully, because it's kind of muffly. Sometimes 
kind of tradition I did tell him how badly that affected me. But another part tells me that maybe he wouldn't even understand or remember how bad it I didn't use the word no, but it was very clear that I wanted him to stop believing me. Think about it. How many of you know someone who has been sexually assaulted or harassed? How many of you have felt some kind of abuse and perhaps not spoken up about it because of fear? We have weeks in the year when stu where students and staff come together to and discuss depression and anxiety and use hashtags such as not a number. But when will we begin to do something about sexual assault? Not only in our campus, but in colleges and in our lives. Thank you. Question. Oh, yeah. So to like hide their identity, actually, so that they don't have a story of the Yeah. Yeah. And like that was also one of the really big challenges because we have never done this before. Yeah, so we had to play around just like with a bunch of elements and yeah. then I guess YouTube inspired us. Like <laughs> so. something that would probably take someone 30 minutes or took us like three hours. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Yeah, Matt. How do you find that people are Um, A lot of people, like when they heard about it, they wanted to speak up because it is something that like more people than you would think have actually gone through it. And so they either spoke up or like they had told one of us a story beforehand or something along those lines. It wasn't in the campus. Many of the stories that we heard were mainly like, like uh, parties yeah, like or off campus. Off right? campus, yeah. But yeah, like students involved on campus like we interviewed some people about something completely different like to still to do with sexual assault and like in some way or another there was something that came up yeah what were the camera and tools you guys used for you map very difficult to get access uh, to DSLR. if you're not a map student yeah and then we um because we were having such a struggle finding cameras uh we i had to walk all the way to my friend's house to get like in the sun to get a camera because it was just, I don't know, just getting one was just so hard because we thought we'd get one after school, but then everything changed and, yeah. Uh, yeah so like so. one of the things like I actually want to do is talk to um, the, like Mr. Safina was Monica or something and ask them to make the map cameras accessible to everyone because like for us, like we had to, I had to constantly get one of my friends to get us the camera and then she was like, oh, I can only get it this time, but then she also needed the camera and there's only so many people who can check it out. Okay. 